You've heard of shrimpoluminescence before, right? That thing pistol shrimps do where they snap their claws so fast it gives off a burst of light? It turns out the physics is really cool and also complicated. Let me tell you about it. When the pistol shrimp snaps its claw, it shoots out a high power sound wave. Like all sound waves, there are regions of high pressure followed by regions of low pressure. In fact, we experience sound precisely because our eardrums get pushed in by the high pressure and pulled out by the low pressure in a repeating pattern. Anyway, it's the low pressure part of the wave that kicks this whole thing off. You know how water boils at a lower temperature at higher altitudes? This is why you have to cook food longer at higher altitudes, by the way. Well, that's part of a general trend. The lower the pressure, the lower the boiling point of water. The pistol shrimp causes a small region of such low pressure that the water boils instantly, turning into water vapor. This forms a bubble of gas, called a cavitation bubble. What happens next is a bit murkier. After all, it's hard to control pistol shrimps effectively to run experiments. Fortunately, we can produce a similar situation in a lab. By filling a jar with water and then using a high-pressure ultrasound transducer to produce cavitation bubbles, we can create oscillatory pressure waves that induce similar cavitation bubbles at a fixed location over and over again. So what I'm about to tell you is what happens in an example of that cyclic process. That said, it seems likely that it's a similar mechanism that the shrimp uses. Anyway, with that caveat out of the way, once the cavitation bubble forms and the high-pressure region of the sound wave approaches it, the bubble begins to collapse, just like pushing a balloon deeper and deeper underwater. Over the course of about 4 microseconds, the size of the bubble decreases from about 30 micrometers to 5 micrometers. As this happens, some of the water vapor recondenses at the edge of the bubble, leaving behind roughly 80% argon gas, which is a trace gas in air, and 20% water vapor. During this collapse, the gas in the bubble has heated up to around 500 Kelvin. Near the end of this period, the bubble is collapsing so fast that heat can't escape. In the final stage before it reaches minimum size, the bubble's temperature continues to increase, eventually reaching 4000 Kelvin. At that point, the water molecules start to split into hydroxide and hydrogen radicals. This absorbs some energy and limits further temperature rise, meaning that the temperature caps out at around 10,000 Kelvin, about 100 picoseconds before maximum compression. Now, the temperature is sufficiently high for the argon and the remaining oxygen and hydrogen atoms to slightly ionize. The free electrons ricochet off the atoms, releasing light, called bremsstrahlung, in the process. Also, some of these electrons recombine with ionized atoms, releasing light as well. This emission is called sonoluminescence. It lasts for about 100 picoseconds, at which point enough energy is lost, primarily through sound waves, that the bubble cools down and stops emitting light. In laboratory settings, the bubble then re-expands and the whole process repeats itself. Unfortunately, this doesn't completely answer the question for the pistol shrimp. A key factor in producing sonoluminescence in a lab is that, in each cycle, there's less and less molecular nitrogen and oxygen in the cavitation bubble. This happens during the dissociation part of the cycle and the free radicals dissolve into the surrounding water. But until they're basically all gone, which takes around 100 cycles, sonoluminescence just doesn't occur. So shrimp luminescence is still a mystery, because in that setting the cavitation bubble isn't nearly pure argon. But this is the closest explanation we have, so it'll have to do.